1945, the conclusion of World War II marked the beginning of a new era. From 1945 to 1957, the improvement in the United States economy resulted in an enormous spike in birth rates, and the population of the United States rose drastically. This generation, known as the Baby Boomers, became the center of the counterculture mood of the 1960s. They questioned the conservative and traditional nature of the United States culture and sought to create a discrimination-free society. The Civil Rights Movement, the Feminist Movement, the Anti-Vietnam War Movement, and the Gay Rights Movement were all direct results of this new, radical point of view. They all focused on the concept of change in society by unifying people behind a common ideology. The emergence of large movements under the banner of social change was reflective of the 1960s as an era. This was a time of awakening, when people no longer wanted to accommodate a society that did not fit them. Especially, the unprecedented use of psychedelic drugs had a heavy impact on American society. Psychedelics, you're either on the bus or off. The exploration of psychedelic drugs strongly impacted the United States by exchanging nonconformist ideologies, giving rise to unprecedented social encounters, and paving the way for contemporary pop culture. But first, how exactly do psychedelic drugs affect the human body? <clears throat> this set of drugs falls into a larger class known as uh, hallucinogens. So you have some drugs that produce uh, some type of euphoria or high, such as opiates or stimulants. What's different about the psychedelic drugs is that they uh, produce an alteration of cognition and the perceptions around us of reality. The encounter with psychedelics began in the late 1950s, a period in which American society was heavily influenced by societal norm. However, individuals sprang up in the midst of that and created a rebellious subculture. American novelist and poet Jack Kerouac named the group the Beat Generation because the group was constantly beat down and tired out by society. The leftist ideology towards American way of life continued in the 1960s. The term Beat, you probably actually heard before when, like, you know, you get off work, you know, long day or whatever, and you're like, oh man, I'm beat, I just want to relax. And that was the exact same sentiment that a lot of these, these writers had was that, you know, they'd been through all these, these experiences. And um, you know they felt just kind of, kind of like literally beaten down by those experiences. The Beat Generation drew heavily on the younger college-age people, who oftentimes were more receptive to new ideas. For example, they advocated the use of marijuana and emphasized a life that was withdrawn from society. Leaders of the movement, Ken Kesey and Timothy Leary, were both pioneers of psychedelic drugs. In 1959, Kesey began studying at Stanford, where he attended a graduate writing program. While there, he took part in the U.S. Army clinical study, in which he was given his first exposure to LSD. While under the influence of LSD, Kesey wrote one of his best-selling novels, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Kesey led his group, The Merry Pranksters, around the United States, exposing the nation to the subculture of psychedelics, so that others could explore its vast world. Dressed in bright, strange-looking clothes, the Merry Pranksters toured across the country in their day-glow-covered bus named Further. In 1963, Kesey and his pranksters would later relocate to La Honda, where they would further their spiritual and acid experimentation. Kesey and his group used the location as a base of operations until Kesey and the other members were charged with the possession of marijuana, followed by him fleeing the country to Mexico. Psychedelic drugs soon became outlawed. The Merry Prankster's greatest success was the San Francisco Trips Festival in 1966. The first large-scale gathering, consisting of mainly hippies, the festival revolved around psychedelic rock and facilitated the exchange of nonconformist ideas. The Merry Prankster's achievements were chronicled in Tom Wolfe's nonfiction book, Electric Kool Aid Acid Test. On the other side of the country, Timothy Leary explored psychedelics as a Harvard researcher. He believed that the use of psychedelics would help elevate people's minds. He was driven out of his professional job and went on to form a following of his own. Leary's inner circle focused more on the scholarly approach while well, Kesey's brand focused on the lifestyle aspect of the psychedelic culture. Though their approaches were different, they both sought the same goal, to explore the world of psychedelics, educate people on their interpretation of life, and encourage people to join them. The psychedelic movement first found its breeding grounds in the early 1960s, in the Haight-Ashbury district of San Francisco. Later on, it would become the center for the movement, 
culminating in the Summer Love Festival in 1968. There, a group of over 100,000 people united in San Francisco and exchanged ideas on music, politics, fashion, and of course, psychedelics. However, there was also another sect of hippie culture, the Yippies, also known as the Youth International Party. The Yippies were more politically active than a normal hippie. Founded in 1968, the Yippies were created by social activists Abby Hoffman and Jerry Rubin. They were most known for their protests at the 1968 Democratic Convention which showcased police brutality. Although the Yippies soon ceased to be an official organization, its members continued to exert political influences after the events of the 1960s. Psychedelics came about as a response to societal norms and influenced the people to abandon those preconceptions. American society stigmatized the movement with exaggerated media coverage. However, an unintended symbiotic relationship formed, and psychedelics became more and more popular. Many artists imitated the visions of their psychedelic trips. For example, Wes Wilson, a poster designer from San Francisco, pioneered in new types of fonts by inserting colors from opposite ends of the color wheel, making the letters seem as if they were moving or melting. Psychedelic drugs not only affected one's sense of sight, but it also changed one's sense of sound. Exploring and attempting to imitate the sounds they heard, psychedelic artists incorporated unprecedented tunes into their works, and as a result, psychedelic rock was born. In their prime, members of the Beatles used psychedelic drugs in order to search for new sounds to incorporate into their music. Under the influence of psychedelics, the Beatles released three major albums, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, Revolver, and Magical Mystery Tour. Music lovers also used psychedelic drugs in order to enhance their experience at the rock concerts. Psychedelic rock evoked a sense of spirituality in many Americans. Users often recalled that they had encountered God during their psychedelic trips. Subsequently, more and more people took up psychedelics, as they acted as stepping stones for people to tap into their spirituality. Many of the legacies of the psychedelic movement are still evident in today's society. Not only is the genre of psychedelic rock still popular today, but other genres of music have also stemmed from psychedelic rock. For example, EDM, also known as electronic dance music, grew from psychedelic music, as it includes many surprisingly similar sounds. Like psychedelic rock concerts, EDM concerts are characterized by a wide range of bright lights and electrifying sounds, which appeal to young adults. Not only has psychedelics affected many aspects of American culture, but many new types of psychedelic drugs have also been brought into mainstream use. For example, while LSD served as the main drug during psychedelic rock concerts, ecstasy, a much more potent psychedelic, plays the same role in today's concerts and modern day parties. Furthermore, experts today have developed preliminary techniques of using psychedelic drugs for medical uses. Researchers say that psychedelic drugs have the potential to treat alcoholism and personality disorders. The effects of psychedelic drugs are also evident in the liberal nature of Western United States, where the psychedelic movement originally began. Since then, California and Washington State have remained as some of the most liberal places in the United States. Today, the struggle to legalize recreational marijuana stems from the influences of the psychedelic movement. Many marijuana advocates derived their beliefs from the events of the 1960s. If psychedelic drugs had not been encountered in the 1960s, Western United States would not be as transformative and liberal as it is today. By exchanging rebellious ideologies, promoting bizarre social encounters, and establishing modern pop culture, psychedelic drugs have been able to leave a noticeable mark on American history. Beginning with the Beat Generation, the psychedelic movement continued with Timothy Leary's scholarly advocation and Ken Kesey's wild and on-the-bus journey. Psychedelic drugs paved the way for people to express themselves. Some found that society was not a place for them, so they set out to create their own. Others spread many new and unprecedented ideas on fashion, entertainment, and of course, the use of psychedelic drugs. These ideas spurred people to break free from societal norms and undermine the pre-established conservative way of thought. There is no doubt that the exploration and encounter of psychedelic drugs has left its mark on the United States history and changed the course of the world.